Good evening. We are on the 24th of March 2021. I'm going to be sharing Bride of Christ, Jesus Christ by M. Basilius Inc. from 1989, one of my favourite writers. And the title is Sharing Jesus' Sufferings in the End Times. A great blessing is granted to the Bride of Jesus Christ in these end times, one which bridal souls in other centuries were not able to experience to such an extent apart from a few singled out by the Lord to share in some measure his passion. Today, a bride of Jesus should bear not only his sufferings from Gethsemane to Calvary in her heart, but also his present day sufferings Nowadays, Jesus is being crucified many times over throughout the world. Hebrews 6, 6 Because of the falling away of thousands who were once consecrated to God, among them are souls who have betrayed their Lord and who in positions of Christian leadership are leading countless numbers astray. Jesus must witness a fallen humanity wallowing in the most appalling sins the world has ever known and the growing influence of Satan in most lives. Satan is acknowledged as Lord with many consciously or unconsciously serving him and so the earth increasingly bears the imprint of hell. Jesus is suffering immeasurably. His heart is almost breaking. It is impossible for his bride to be indifferent. Love shares in the sufferings of the beloved as every bride knows, yet many who know the Lord confess with sadness, Oh, my love is still so small. The sufferings of Jesus today ought to stir my heart more deeply, kindling in me the desire to share in his suffering. This is why bridal souls pray for a sensitivity to the pain and burden Jesus feels when he looks upon this demonized world with its sins of ever increasing depravity, perverted sex, violence, child abuse, the deception of the young, terror, murder, suicide, and euthanasia. He absorbs the pain of all these sins in his heart. He sees a world full of adultery, divorce, the slaughter of unborn children in their millions. He sees fragmented personalities people addicted to drugs and resembling Satan. 
love has grown cold in the hearts of many and in its place there is an intense hatred towards one another as well as towards God, their maker, whom they mock and blaspheme shamelessly. Now, Jesus is waiting for his bride to respond to his suffering. For a true bride wants to share the innermost concerns of her bridegroom, Jesus wants to show his bride what is on his heart and impress it on her so that she will become more and more intimately united with him as she shares in his suffering. Jesus in turn feels especially for his bride who has to live in these end times. Increasingly, she is rejected by a society that promotes the triumph of evil because it is dominated by hellish concepts and methods, satanic music and idols. It is a painful experience for the bride of Jesus to be ostracized even in Christian circles which are often infiltrated or seduced by the deceptions of our times. In these end times sufferings her heavenly bridegroom comforts her and endows her with his glory if she undergoes these sufferings in union with him and in complete surrender to the will of God. Yes, he uses them to transform her into his image so that she stands out more than ever against her surroundings. Whereas many faces today reflect the sin and darkness of our time. Her face reflects Jesus. She is radiant with an inner beauty born of the deep suffering she has to endure in the end times. Sharing Jesus' sufferings, the fellowship of his sufferings increasingly refines and transforms her, making her strong and radiant. Having to live in this satanic age does not have a depressing effect on the bride. Many others witnessing the devastation caused by sin grow discouraged or come under a sense of oppression. The bride bears the pain in union with Jesus rather than alone. Her suffering is bound up with his. This is why the end time sorrows are incapable of driving her, like some believers, to despair. Her heart is filled with divine life and love which no suffering can destroy. This divine life impels her to make the most of the short time left to express her love for Jesus by ministering to others in love and actively serving in his kingdom. There is a cry 
in her heart. Divine judgment is about to descend. Judgment such as the world has never seen before. The earth will be in a turmoil. Mountains will tremble and fall. The oceans will roar and large tracts of land will be submerged. Disastrous earthquakes will strike with growing frequency. Cities and entire areas will be erased from the map. There will be scenes of untold devastation and misery and many will lose their lives. In view of the coming judgment of God, a true bride of Jesus is gripped with a consuming ardour Time is short. I've got to do all I can before it's too late. She takes her place beside the Saviour as he rescues souls from the abyss of sin in which mankind lies today. Like an extended arm of her Lord, she helps to save those perishing in sin and misery through repentance priestly suffering and prayers as well as outreach she helps to draw people out of the jaws of hell to this end she sacrifices time money sleep and so on or her sacrifice may lie on a different plane the willingness to bear affliction the trials of everyday life the collapse of her plans or the thwarting of her will such acts of dedication underline her prayers as she battles for souls threatened by the powers of darkness. The bride suffering with her Lord Jesus yields great fruit as suffering born in union with him always does. This is evident. For instance, when she ministers to youth who have succumbed to the deceptions of our times, Jesus gives her great love for this task. And the more she puts her love into action and seeks to bring him comfort by helping to win souls, the more strongly she will be united with him. Yes, the end times, probably more than any former era, create a special bond between the bride of Jesus and her bridegroom. This relationship is sealed by suffering, suffering with him, person suffering, and suffering with the many deceived souls. This in turn is an incentive to even greater love. Jesus pours his love and compassion into the heart of his bride 
with whom he is so closely united. How does the Bride of Christ come to receive the special grace of not just comprehending with the mind, but feeling with the heart? the living, burning reality of his end-time sufferings so that she can enter into the fellowship of his sufferings, contrition and repentance is the surest way when we are convicted by the smallness of our love for Jesus. We will declare war on everything that is keeping us from this sacrificial love. What is it, however, that hinders us from entering into Jesus' present day sufferings as his bride? the self-life, we are still dominated by our ego with its wishes and demands. We may be quick to take offence when corrected, wronged or denied the recognition we think we deserve. In our hearts, we may then even harbour bitter feelings and accusations. Or perhaps we find it hard to accept difficult, seemingly meaningless paths or times of spiritual dryness when the Lord seems far away. If we are dominated by our ego like this, a barrier is erected. We cannot reach his heart and our love for Jesus cannot develop. But if we pray for contrition about these points and are willing to mend our ways, the barrier will come down and Jesus will allow us to share in his sufferings, the greatest privilege there is, since it brings the deepest union with him. The fellowship of Jesus' sufferings here on earth will bring the bride wonderful fellowship with him in the heavenly glory. There she will see him and be united with him in never-ending joy. Yet, even here, during the horrors of this satanic age, the bride of Jesus has a tremendous hope while she increasingly witnesses the advance of Satan, she has the assurance of Jesus' final victory, which she helps to proclaim and usher in, even amid the darkness of our times. She can see it dawning, on the horizon. Today, just 
as the satanic is coming into the open through people whose characters and actions bear the stamp of hell, bridal love for Jesus is becoming more visible than ever. In contrast to the almost tangible manifestation of darkness, a light all the more powerful shines forth from the bride of Jesus Christ. Suddenly, her hidden life, her love and sufferings with God are revealed for all the world to see, testifying of Jesus' divine life in her. That inextinguishable life which defeated death and hell. Thus, she helps to pave the way for his resurrection, victory, to be manifested in his coming kingdom. This we see happening not just in individual bridal souls today, a whole company of bridal souls has come into being as a clear sign of the emerging dominion of Jesus Christ. What a unique phase in divine history while well, Satan and his servants rage and blasphemy cries out to heaven. We are privileged in our day to see the bridal host of Jesus Christ crystallizing, sometimes without having ever met before. Those who love Jesus are automatically drawn together, united by a common concern. They speak out publicly against blasphemy and make a stand for their Lord one in their love for him. Despite their various denominational backgrounds, so in the end times we find a whole group of people uniquely proving their love for Jesus as they share in the fellowship of his suffering. Thank you for listening to me from this book book I've had for some time. May the Lord bless you and heal you. I'm sending you peace in abundance and always be joyful and happy in the Lord despite what is going on all around you and us in the world, especially with the weather and all the bad, bad things that are, are happening. God is still in control and we have the victory in Jesus Christ on the cross. God bless you all. And thank you once again for staying with me this long. <laughs>